Uh, well, we're going to be talking about a subject today, politics. You know, that seemed to be in the news. I can't cut my TV on. Look like no, every no, no. channel I try to do, and sometimes I try to just turn to a movie channel and they still talk politics. So we're going to talk politics since everybody is talking politics. We got our guest today, Dr. James Gordon, with us there, and you know he liked that politics. So that's why we chose politics, because he and I look like uh, when we get together, all we talk about is politics now. No, yeah. So we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about politics, and we'd like to hear your opinion on politics. Hello, well, Doc. Yeah, hello, everybody. Uh, this, this is uh, yeah, Dr. James Gordon, your local chiropractor here today. Um, thanks for inviting me, Brother Hasee. It's good to be here again, you and the good Reverend, talking <laughs> politics or religion. Which one are we talking well, about? Well, I think we can talk at all, Doc. We need, <laughs> we, need a little, we need a little of all. You know, uh, I guess I, politics may be less volatile. You know, well, you know, politics. on this program, I usually try to deal with what makes a human being human. And there's four areas uh, that we have to uh, uh, talk about when we're talking about the human being. And that's the spiritual area of spirituality. And then we have to talk about the intellectual area, which is education, that is uh, said. And we also have to look at economics, because we all can relate to economics. We need some type of economics to survive in this world. So we talk about business and economics, and also the social aspect, which deal with the political system, uh, social uh, and politics. They, they are uh, kind of one and the same as the society grow, then they become a need for leadership in different areas. Well, I and this is how politics come about. Well, I think intellect, economics, and social go together with politics, you know, because in, in actuality, if you don't have an intellectual uh, voter pool, you end up getting poor representation, and you really can't complain about representation because you put them in office. So the intellect has to be there to, in order to elect someone who's willing to serve. Uh, a politician acts as if he doesn't have anything to do with the economy, but he's directly responsible for the economy through his policies and through her policies. So I think that the economics is there, and definitely the social aspect of it. But I think social, you say social is one of the top, I would say it's one of the you know, I really don't, the, you know, the, the religious uh, following of a president, you know, I want him to be an honorable person and a, a, a God-fearing, but at the end of the day, I want to have someone who's uh, got good economic sense and good God intelligence, uh, and I need to have, I mean, the voter pool need to have that so that they can make sure uh, that when they go to vote, they know why they're voting for someone. Don't vote for anyone because I say so, because Henry says so. Vote for someone because... You say so, and you know why. And uh, that's, uh, well, um, just to uh, elaborate just a little bit more on what I said on that, each one of these areas have uh, three to four developments uh, in there, and uh, since that wasn't a topic today, I won't okay. uh, elaborate on all of them, but all of those areas, the spiritual, the educational, and you're, you're exactly right, they can all be put into one or the other area. So we can look at intellect when it comes to business, we can look at intellect when it comes to spirituality, and we can also look up intellect when it comes to the social and political aspect, which is why we are sponsoring uh, a voter's education, not just registration, but a voter's education Amen. seminar, Amen. because we need to also be educated to the voting process. Well, I believe the, the, um, yeah, that's very important, very admirable of you guys, because many people just sort of sit down at a table and register folks to vote. And if you get uh, get a, a right to do something, you don't know why. It's like giving you a driver's license, you not knowing the rules of the road. Right. And, uh, you don't. You, know, you got to take a test before you get the driver's license, and we don't want people to take a test before they get a registration or uh, a voter's registration card. They did that in the old days. Right. Uh, but it's in the negative sense. But I think that if you, when you do do voter registration drives, you need to be responsible and educate the public. Right. I, I applaud the other group for that because that's going to be a very helpful in terms of way, what's that way we go forward. And we're so close to the uh, political window, we need to make sure if we talk Republican, we're going to talk Democrat. Mm -hmm. And I think one of my biggest frustrations, Brother Hasib, is when I see, you know, when we have these, these, these movements, it's wrong for, uh, uh, you know, I saw a Facebook post the other day where an officer went to someone's home and asked them to do something. I think he was trying to break up a domestic uh, uh, incident, and the gentleman struck the police officer, and then... Of course, they went downhill from there, but of course, you can't, 
be confrontational uh, to the law enforcement and expect that to turn out right. And equally, the law enforcement can't be uh, overly uh, zealous in doing their job mm -hmm. uh, and, and confrontational and expect it to turn out right. But I think that what, what the biggest thing that frustrates me is uh, when they say, like, I, I get a chant going, like, hands up, don't shoot, mm -hmm. and then you do the investigation, you find out that was never the case. Mm -hmm. Or we do it, you know, people say that uh, 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 Donald Trump candidate had a Hitler sign, and that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. uh, Donald Trump was telling people, I need you to pledge support to Donald Trump so that if I, he, this part he didn't say, but what he's saying is, if I'm treated unfairly and leave this political party, I need to make sure your pledge is my support to me, so you leave when I leave, Mm -hmm. Or you go, you follow Donald Trump, mm -hmm. and of course the news media who hates him uh, because they're going to lose their free lunch if he gets elected. They're trying to twist it to say it's a Hitler uh, right. chant or a Hitler vote, and so I, I, don't, I don't mind being against mm -hmm. the man because he's for big business and not for my working class people. But I don't need to lie. On, I don't need to. I don't need to sell a lie. I don't need to, the lie doesn't sell. Period. When it's either for or it's against us, uh, it doesn't need to sell. And like when they lied on Bernie Sanders, they lied on Hillary Clinton, they lie on everybody, but. There are facts out there that's concerned that, that are that are very concerning that we need to talk about, but then don't mix up the facts with the lies because that mm -hmm. just causes confusion. Well, you know uh, that seems to be a big thing in politics today. Uh, matter of fact, I've heard some people uh, explain uh, the political plot, uh, process as a lying process. They say you got to be a lawyer, a liar, in order to be political, which I don't. I agree with that, but I do um, agree with you on what you're saying. There's too much false information or incomplete information that's out here that leads the public to uh, a decision that if they had more uh, information, they may not necessarily uh, make. But you know, when we talk about the political process, or any process, uh, as you were saying, the incident with the police officer, the number one thing that I see uh, where people have problems is the lack of respect. <coughs> now, my philosophy is this. If you do not respect yourself, then you can't respect, as that song say, nobody else. And as you know, I like to use those song themes. You uh, too, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that was, I a, that was a song that. called, If You Can't Respect Yourself, then yeah. you can't respect nobody else. And I agree with that. <laughs> so it starts with self. Yeah. And uh, of course, if you respect yourself, then you're going to demand <coughs> respect of others. Respect and yourself. So if, uh, <laughs> na, na, na. if the police officer won't respect, then he has to respect himself and he has to respect the other. Even if they disrespect themselves, he has to be respectful. And the person who's... Um, uh, on the other side also has to be respectful if they want to get respect because a lot of times I've seen incidents like that too that the person wants the officer to respect them but they don't want to respect the officer yes. and uh, it don't go that way especially in the law enforcement no. uh, uh, end of it. No, if you really want to know it's like an adult, a, a, a parent can get away with say do as I do and not as I say mm -hmm. or get away with not necessarily being respectful with demanding respect to the child and when it comes to law enforcement it's pretty much the same way they can get away with being mean at the time but if you get you can record the incident or get the information you go to their higher ups and get some some justice there but you can't get justice in the street mm -hmm. so you can't come you can't punch an officer ever or slap an officer like Zaza Gabor you went to jail mm -hmm. and don't say it's a black or white thing right. it's an ignorant thing right. if you're stupid right. enough to smack a cop oh, that's right then you're going to be, you're going to pay the price. There's a yeah. price to pay for that. And and that's where uh, the lack of respect, the disrespect comes in. You know, um, by its nature, law enforcement, then of course, if uh, you are stopped or pulled over by law enforcement, then you know that there's something that they perceive that you did wrong. Whether you did wrong or not, they can't make the judgment on that. You have to go to court for that. But, a lot of times, uh, because we are pulled over, sometimes people get angry just for the, the fact of being pulled over. You know, I, I was too shucks. He got me and I didn't have the right tag on my car. Uh, he got me and I was speeding. Yes, I'm really mad at myself, but a lot of times we like to take that out on others what we should be taking out on ourselves. Well, every time I got stopped for speeding, I wasn't mad at 
myself, I was mad that I got caught. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, that's, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes we take that madness out on others that we should take out on ourselves there. Right. Uh, but we have to be more respectful, not only of, of law officers, we should be respectful of every human being. It happens at home. I notice when a kid grows up respecting their parents, mm -hmm. respecting their elders, we're getting away from that. And that's that political yeah. correctness that I, I appreciate some candidates talking about. When you get away from respecting your parents, you're just a, uh, you, you're not far from being uh, in, in the legal system because you can't be disrespectful to your parent and all of a sudden going to respect another right. Uh, right. authority mm -hmm. because your parents don't have a gun or any way to, they don't have a badge or anything on, but if you're not smart enough to know to respect those, those right. your parents or your elders, your uncles mm -hmm. or whatnot, all your elders, you got, you got a major problem. You got a major well, problem. Well, you, you, you do and I think you hit on a key point there and that's the reason a lot of people say, well, it starts in the home and it does. Uh, because the parent is the first teacher and uh, one thing that we need to instill more of in, in our children is the importance of the parents. Now, I believe this. I say if a teacher hasn't taught, then the student doesn't learn. Mm. And if the student doesn't learn, then the teacher hasn't taught. So I'm saying that we cannot blame that child because that child come here with a empty mind. It doesn't have anything. It don't come here already knowing it's A, B, C, or one, two, three. All of that has to be taught to that child. And the person or the people who are responsible first for teaching that child is the parent. So the parent can never get away from that responsibility of being a parent. And in this environment that I see we're living in today, parents have kind of let the child down on being a responsible parent. And I know even being a responsible parent that the environment that we're in works against us. So sometimes you can teach respect at home and uh, the environment out there plays a work against the respect that you have you're trying to bring your children up to. So mm -hmm. I'm aware of that, but it starts at home. You, you can't give up at home even if uh, the environment is against uh, what you're trying to teach your children. Okay, and in and, and line with our, our subject matter, I guess, on the... Well, that's politics. This yeah. is this is the real <laughs> politics. <laughs> you know, uh, our situation, and I've said this from time to time, we shouldn't, uh, our situation shouldn't be judged by who gets in the White House. And a lot of times we do. That, that, that won't change your situation. That won't There's change no your situation. It'll it, it change the... The jobs are maybe available, or the the conditions of of, of some public facilities, or, or or the way some of the schools even are done with the with the court coming court whatnot. But mm -hmm. it definitely wouldn't change your household. Uh, well, I agree with that, and and you know uh, while we're talking about your common core, which is dealing with the educational process, um, if parents and I know we all have to work. Some of us we work in fifteen twenty hours and. We still ain't got but the income of a four or five hour job. I understand all of that. Uh, you can look at my page. Yeah. <laughs> and look at my, the, the, my, my grandchildren asked me, say, well, granddad, how do you get paid? I, I said, well, I don't most of the time. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> I'm so busy trying to make sure everybody else get paid. <laughs> but, uh, and, and, then, and then there's none left for me. Oh, but, um, that's, uh, that's one of the price of being in business for All the employees. <laughs> Um, More than just yeah, tell me anything left over. <laughs> if it's anything left over, I may. <laughs> yeah, well, you're right. And then you uh, you gotta you gotta skip, skip some bill to get there. Oh, yeah, a roof leak or something. Man. But, oh man. Uh, yes. But when we're talking about education, if we as parents, whether you got children in the school system or not, I hear this. Oh, I don't. All my children is grown, and I don't have anything. The present of parents in the school system and I think yeah. some kind of way the school system and the parents or the citizens uh, of that community in which the children are being uh, uh, um, are going to we got to get together we got to get I find out 
that when I visit in the school system, even the, the, the naughty children, sometimes I have to say something to some of them, but they have a natural respect, I guess because I'm an outsider and they don't see me every day. They have a, a little bit more respect than, than what they have maybe for their teachers and, and their other peers. So if we got more presence of parents uh, in the schools, then we wouldn't have these situations like we had with one of our schools where the principal uh, was trying to make a statement, and I think a legitimate statement myself, where he suspended uh, not one or two, but I think over a hundred children, and instead of the parent trying to problem. teach, right, trying to teach the child the reason why that they're being, and not to do that again, the parents actually came out against another person trying to save their children. Well, you can't fix overcrowded problem by suspending 100 <laughs> kids. I'm thinking that there, if you got to suspend 100 kids, that's a deeper problem there. Well, well it that, is that, a deeper problem, problem, and I think at that time that uh, some of our listeners may uh, remember, it was dealing with their dress. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, especially when you go out to get jobs and, and uh, uh, even present yourself in public, you've got a certain presentation that you have to have. If I'm going to go for a job interview, and now our young children go for a job interview, and they don't even think about their dress, how they look, how their hair is, how their pants is, what kind of shoes they wear. They don't realize that this is the first impression that the employer gets you of my hair. You're getting close to home. You know, you know. <laughs> well, you know, some of us just try to manage this stuff. You know, right. work <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, uh, we still have to make it look the best, even, even though it may be a little sad. Uh, uh, and, I, and I agree with what you're talking about, because I was down at uh, uh, Crown products one time and I, sometimes I'll sit in a restaurant drink some coffee and people come in looking for a job and some people be nicely dressed and some people be like they're just scalping under the car and it's like you know it's my, you're probably not going to get this job you know, with that off under the car. Register to win an electric turkey fryer when you file your returns with H&H &H and pull the money lever to win additional cash. Get your money back fast now with H&H. &H. All right, we're back with a conversation with uh, Henry Hasib here. And we're going to uh, just talk about another subject here for the next few minutes here uh, that we feel that's very important uh, because so many people are falling victim to this. And this is... Uh, dealing with real estate in the foreclosure market. So many homes are coming on the market as foreclosed property because families are losing their home. And we want to just share some information with you on some of the things you may be able to do to prevent this. And we know life is up and down that uh, we're going to probably always have that market. But a lot of things we can correct if we got better information, a better knowledge of it. So and, we're and, talking and, here. And Tom, did, uh, knowledge brother, I see, want to say that the the uh, uh, brother I see is a broker. He has H and H Real Estate. If you're looking to sell your house or list your house, please consider uh, H and H Real Estate. I, I go around the community, and I see uh, not enough H and H Real Estate signs, nor do I see enough of the floor real estate signs. Uh, you know, so we got to start saying, okay, you, you come to. H and H or the floor realty for, for donations and whatnot to, to help out situations in the community, or you come to them when you have uh, real estate problems or to save your homes. But when we're selling homes and buying homes, we got to use these guys so they'd be in a position to help out more. It's all about uh, and there's other real estate companies in in the community also. But if you're going to go to these community 
real estate companies to ask for donations and to ask for uh, help assistance on this program or that program, you need to keep in mind that they don't make money by just uh, giving out, giving charity. Uh, they make money by selling, selling these property. I want to say that the real estate crisis, you know, the people always say, and we get lied to on the regular, I see, about our economy doing good and everybody doing better. But I think what we have in this country is a lot of people have stopped looking for jobs. And we've also have a lot of people who are underemployed. They work $20 an hour, but they're making 5 to $10 an hour. Not really 5 because the minimum wage is seven thirty-five, but uh, they're making a lot less than their, their work. I see this all the time. Homeowners searching for mortgage refinancing. Hey, guys, you need some help. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Follow me. Come on. If you're underwater and current on your payments, it's your best route to a better mortgage. See if you qualify at harp.gov. H&H &H Financial Services and Mobile has over 20 years experience in accounting, bookkeeping, appraisals, real estate, and year-round tax preparations. Give them a call today at 251-438-1620 or visit them at 1560 St. Stephen's Road in Mobile. Let your money grow in our care at H&H &H Financial Services. Join Robert Battles, Henry Hasib, and myself this Sunday at 5.30 in the morning for the next edition of Rise and Shine on Fox 10. All right, we are back with a conversation with Henry Hasib where we're talking about politics and education today. And we'd like to hear from you. If you got a question or comment, give us a call at 457-0601. Um, this important subject that we are discussing, we'd like to hear from you on it. And we want to also say that we will be having a uh, education seminar, a political education seminar that will be dealing with what we should know about our political system and how, what we should look uh, uh, in our leaders that we elect to represent us in this political system here. So join us uh, on March 16 uh, at 10 o'clock at the Tomanville Library. I see, you know, you're talking about Democrats, we talk about the Republicans, let's look at the pros and cons. Gosh, you know, I get, I get a little bit, 10 years ago, I used to think I knew what a Democrat and Republican was, but mm -hmm. nowadays it seems like the lines are so <laughs> so blurry that you can almost, right. yeah, unfortunately, it's almost like you need a new party called the Labor Party. Mm -hmm. You need a party to say, okay, the England has a Labor Party, and then they have like an elite party. They don't call it the elite mm -hmm. party the elite party, but they got this Labor Party. And you think Labor, you're thinking about union workers, hourly mm -hmm. workers, small business owners, and mm -hmm. you're looking out for the little guy. Right. We don't really have that party now, it doesn't seem. I know the Democrats are supposed to, but you know, like these free trade agreements, mm -hmm. these, we got three, well, uh, President Obama was trying to put in another free trade agreement called the Asian Free Trade Agreement. I call it AFTA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement. You have CAFTA, mm -hmm. Central American Free Trade Agreement. And these free trade agreements are why all our jobs move south to Mexico and other countries out of America. Mm -hmm. We've heard in the news about Cary Air Condition recently. Nabisco, Cary Air Conditioning laid off 1,400 union jobs. 1,400. Wow. That'll kill a community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 1,400, 30 to $40 right. an hour jobs to go down to Mexico and pay higher skies at $5 a week or $5 a, a, an hour or $5 a day or whatever they're paying them. And that's, ama that's, see, that's amazing savings for Carrier, but it doesn't help the American citizen. Uh, and then I, I, I believe when, when uh, these companies are making these decisions, they are not looking at the whole picture. They get a piece of the pie, and that piece of the pie may say that, hey, uh, if I do this, I can make bring more to the bottom line. And the stockholders or whoever, the owners of the company, they will love me. But they don't see that actually they're really killing their own self because of the way that they're doing it. Well, the, consumer, they they're the, the consumers of your air-conditioned products are your employees. Right, if, exactly. they're, if they're a union, mm -hmm. strong union employees. Mm -hmm. One thing I applaud English shipbuilding. It's a strong union. Mm -hmm. And the companies we get in Alabama, we've got to do a lot better because they're non-union companies, which means they pay a very low wages. These low wages have got to come up. You're talking about minimum wage, $15. They pay $15 when you get hired to some of these uh, shipbuilding places in Alabama. That's an insult. Right, right. yeah. Whereas Ingalls pays uh, $15, $30, $40 an hour uh, for some of the same jobs to make $15 an hour over here. Well, you know, we talk about it all the time about living wages, and uh, of course, uh, here in Alabama, you know, it is hard to make a living wage, and it all ties in. You know, if uh, 
we able to pay a living wage, then of course we got to be able to make a living wage. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along the road, somebody has figured out how to take the wealth or the money circulation away from the working, what I call the working poor, to raising it up to the super rich. So in this country, trillions of dollars are now taken out of the hands and the pockets of the working poor people and they're put up in the hands of rich people. And it's done just like we say. Uh, I can bring you more money to you uh, yourself by uh, by making a bigger bottom line. Well, if I mm -hmm. own the air conditioned people, that sounds good to me, but I'm not looking at the overall effect of what it's doing. I will become richer, but the people that's working for me is going to be poor, and uh, I'll be rich, but they'll be poor. Well, what people got to do is educate themselves. Like you mm -hmm. said in those first four things, your intellect and your, your economics, you got to be educated on that. Mm -hmm. There's over 20 car plants. Mm -hmm. that ship cars to America that are in Mexico. I even have the addresses. Over 20 car plants mm -hmm. from Chrysler to Ford to Chevy, uh, which is uh, all, all the General Motors, to Honda, to, to uh, you name it, they're making it in New Mexico, and they're shipping them back up to us mm -hmm. at free trade, no taxes, and they're trying to, they sell them at the same price. You're making them for half the cost, mm -hmm. because you're losing all the labor, right. and you bring them up here, you sell them for, for the same cost, so you make a profit for Wall Street. But right. the problem is you got two Democratic mm -hmm. presidents that push the free trade agreements and one Republican president that mm -hmm. push the free trade agreement. So that's like I said, the lines get so blurry. You think you're a Democrat, you think you're a Republican. So we are doing some crazy things ourselves before we even get to the thing that's not shown in public. Yeah, well the video cameras, uh, even businesses are so much sophisticated than they were 10, 20 years ago. Right. And you see all these crazy shows where people are trying to do criminal acts and it's like, there's cameras around. Right, well, I watch a picture that uh, uh, they call the dumb criminal or something like that. Yeah, these people, they, they'll go and they steal something, and then they see a camera, and they, they, they're amazed by the camera, and they give them a full profile of who they are with the camera. <laughs> At that point, I should sit down and just wait for the hour. <laughs> <laughs> just sit down. Uh, things can be used for good purpose. And things also can be used for evil well, purposes. I think the J. Edgar mm -hmm. Hoover's and the people who refuse to allow anything to happen to Hillary, you know, people go with the both extremes. I think those, that's going to be the right.